Hey, what's up, y'all? Colleague Glover again, also known as ColecoVision, and this is part three of the video series for the, uh, Mixing Academy. And in this video, uh, we're going to cover the third part, because the first part we covered what constitutes a great mix. Second part we covered approaching the mix. So we're, now we're down here on the third part the mix formula and in this video we're going to cover all these things I'm going to give you an, another overview of what's going to be covered on the mixing webinar this week and um, it's coming now in fact uh, I think it's one more day yeah but anyway um, we're going to cover a couple of things here I'll give you a few nuggets but when we get in the webinar I will dig in to show you how to ensure that you have the best chance of creating a hit song when you go to do your mixes, you know, just by having a formula to approach different things, landmarks to go by. So one of the first things that you should do, um, I always want to know, one of the first things I decide when I hear a song that I have been given to mix is, who is the audience? Who is this song for? Now, those of you who are new may not know this, and you, you know that if you've been following me or whatever, you know that I started out um, as a guitar player in a band playing funk music, you know, and playing all kinds of R&B and stuff like that. As an engineer, though, I got my first start working for Kenny Rogers. Uh, Kenny Rogers is a country and western artist here, so that's as far removed from anything that I had ever studied or whatever. So I had to learn a lot about what was going on with his style of music as well as the studio that I worked in which was called Lion Share Studios. It was one of the elite studios so they had all kinds of styles of music going on there so we had everybody there from the biggest rock groups to the biggest R&B groups to country and western as well. So um, who is the audience that this song is, is, is for? You have, to assign, you have to assess that immediately so that you don't go off on the wrong path. So for example, if you're doing rock, you know rock is definitely going to be more guitar oriented and um, things, it's not going to be as less, it's not going to be as focused on things like um, drums and keyboard, although the, although all those other elements are important, like drums are definitely very important in rock and all that, but usually it'll be like drums and guitars that'll be banging the beat and, and the guitars will be pounding it out, and then maybe the bass and keyboards if they had it might be secondary, but then also it depends on what kind of rock it is. If it's more electronic bass, then the keyboards may be um, more uh, featured, you know. So you have to immediately know how to assess it for the audience. And um, there's a few little ways I'll show you to be able to look at it, to just be able to tell. Um, R&B is going to be completely different. R&B is different than hip hop, believe it or not. You know, there's some people that think that you kind of do the same approach, but you don't. You know, it took me a minute to learn that as well as I was transitioning and going from it. And like, uh, as I explained, you know, even though I'm getting older, I try to keep my ear young, keep my mind open. So I'm not one of the guys that as it gets older thinks that music coming up from the younger generation is no good. You know, I definitely, I learn it all the time and I hear some stuff that's banging and killing me where I'm like, oh man, that is, that's the bomb. I love it. So um, keeping your mind and I... Keeping your mind and your ears open are very important, so you have to be in tune with what the audience is for this music that you're trying to mix. Um, what is the purpose of the music, okay? Um, if, it's, if it's to get people to dance, a dance record, you know, that's the purpose of it. So you have to make sure you maintain that purpose. Um, if it's a, um, you know, a ballad, you know, you want to make people fall in love or people feel sad or be reflective, that's the purpose. How do I enhance the story? The story, every song has some kind of story in it and you have to know how to sonically get in there and dig that out. And um, what are the tools at your disposal to make some of these things happen? So, you know, um, you can have every plug-in under the sun, but you have to know how to use them. And um, I'll explain to you at, during the webinar how to go about thinking about getting the most out of what you have available. You know, whether you have a little bit or a lot, it's really not so much having a bunch of different tools. You know, all that's always helpful, but if you've only got a bare minimum, you can get some amazing results if you just think properly about using what you already have. 